Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to the weekly top three, the top three things on our mind here at Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets for the week of May 17th, 2021. The weekly top three is a regular segment on The Michael Duke Show. The show broadcasts on Facebook Live and via streaming audio from the show's website weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. I join Michael weekly in the first hour of Tuesday's show from 6.25 to 7 a.m. for a discussion between the two of us about our three issues. We post the podcast of the discussion following the show on the Alaska for Sustainable Budgets Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify pages, also on the new Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets website, as well as the projects page on national blog site, medium.com. You can find past episodes of the weekly top three also at the same locations. Keep in mind that in addition to these podcasts, during the week, you also can follow and participate in the discussion with us of these and other issues affecting Alaska's fiscal and economic condition by following us on the Alaska for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page and through our posts on Twitter. This week, our top three issues are these. First, we discuss where the legislature and governor appear to be on the PFD now as we enter the last two days of the regular session. Second, we explain why we are perplexed about the governor's proposal to delay addressing the appropriation of the state share of the Federal American Rescue Plan funds. And third, we discuss why we think it's important for Alaskans to take the upcoming opportunity to watch the virtual screening of Unrepresented, the award-winning documentary on the corrupting influence of money in politics. And now, let's join Michael. This week, we start off with uh, the elephant in the room, <laughs> the rhinos in the room. Uh, that would be uh, SJ, uh, excuse me, that would be the permanent fund, the uh, SJR6, SJR18, all the different confluence of events. Brad joins us now to discuss. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Michael. This may be one of those weeks that I don't have to say much. You are on a roll. I am on a roll this morning. I am ready to rip and tear something apart here. So, I mean, let's talk about this because you and I, we got a chance on Friday to talk about SGR 6 with our roundtable with McCabe and Shower. I thought it it went through a lot of the pros and cons. Uh, I thought maybe here we have an opportunity to do something, but whoa, whoa, whoa. The, what an amazing change the weekend can bring because all of a sudden every other politician in the building was saw that their pot of money might be disappearing and they came up with all different kinds of alternatives and everything else. Let's talk about where the PFD's at right now. Well, this is one of the this is the time of year when everything just goes on just just goes on fast forward. A, a week ago we were talking about how disappointed we were in the governor not not stepping out and uh, and protecting uh, uh, the PFD. Right. Uh, the next day, he made that obsolete by uh, holding a press conference and uh, and and announcing SJR six, which was a a, a positive development, uh, constitutionalizing a POMV fifty fifty PFD, rolling in the uh, the PCE as part of that to get Lyman on board. Uh, very positive development. Looked like uh, we were we were headed uh, had, had a lot of legislators behind him. Um, and looked like we were headed forward, and then uh, by Friday that was slowed down. Uh, by Friday afternoon that was slowed down because uh, uh, Senate President Peter Manchicki decided he didn't want to go fast on that, and maybe he did a, a head count and realized there wasn't that there wasn't 14 plus 27 to be able to do it. Um, and so, as you as you say, yesterday we roll in we, over the weekend. That sort of plays out, and yesterday we roll into Natasha's bill, SJ or proposal, SJR 18, which uh, basically is the mirror image done in different words, done in uh, with a with a with some different sales points, but the mirror image in in effect of uh, of uh, uh, Kelly um, Kelly Merricks. Merricks, thank you. Her name just right out, went right out, right out my head. Kelly Merricks, uh, HB 202. Uh, over on the House side. So where we stand now is we've got two, basically two competing proposals, uh, long-term proposals. SJR6, which is the governor's proposal for uh, constitutionalizing a POMV 5050 um, uh, PFD, taking the POMV draw uh, every year and dividing it evenly between 
uh, the PFD and uh, and government uh, along the lines that Hammond envisioned. Uh, we've got that at, at at one end, and then we've got HB202, Kelly Merrick's HB202, uh, and and Natasha's. They're they're fundamentally the same thing in effect. Uh, Natasha's SJR18 that uh, that proposes a, a 500, basically a 500 PFD dollar PFD that grows slowly, very slowly. Right. Uh, well, and I think probably, probably doesn't even keep up with inflation. You know, uh, I, I, well, and, and I think the biggest component of Natasha's proposal, and I guess Merrick's proposal, is the fact that it takes the twenty five percent royalties that were supposed to be that were supposed to go to the people, <clears throat> and it's you know through the through the dividend and the PFD, or excuse me, through the, the the permanent fund and the PFD, and it immediately splits it in half, and government takes another half of it right out of the gate, and not on the back end on the earnings itself, but it takes it directly uh, and splits it right out of the gate uh, and, 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 and takes another half of it. Right. I mean, so Alaskans are left. Not only does the state get all the production tax, all the royalty, 75% of the royalties, all the infrastructure tax, all the corporate tax, all the other fees and everything else. Now they're taking another 12 and a half percent right out of the top, right off the top. And leaving Alaskans again holding the bag on uh, on the rest of this, and that's just that's just this go around. When they spend all that money, guess what will happen then? Yeah. Well, Michael, what you really what we really need to focus on though is these are just they're backing into a five hundred five hundred dollar PFD. They're backing in to the leftover amount uh, of this year's budget. Um, and they're and they're sort of you know making it trying to make it permanent. There's all sorts of I mean Merrick goes through other uh, other contortions to get to five hundred dollars. Natasha goes through a different set of contortions to go to five hundred dollars. But the goal of each of them is to get to five hundred dollars of a PFD of five hundred dollars uh, because that's the amount that is left over uh, from from this year's budget basically. Right. Right. Uh, so it's yeah they're all I mean we, we can get wrapped around the axle and upset and 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 you know I I went through some of that yesterday uh, of all of the details of how they're doing it but the overriding goal of each of them is just to get to five hundred dollars. See I think we and, I think we want you to be upset Brad you're always so cal- <laughs> you're always so calm and cool collected every once in a while we want Brad Keithley to just say I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore I mean really how much of this can we take where they keep finagling it back around to we're going to screw you we're going to take all your money we're going to give you the few bucks that are going to be left over and you guys are going to be happy about it or else yeah well I mean that's kind of that's kind of where we're at right I mean <laughs> it is I mean it is it is however 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 they get there the goal is to get to five hundred dollars. I mean, we're in the we're in the same. So so these are those are the long term proposals. SJR six versus SJR Natasha's SJR eighteen and Kelly Merrick's HB two hundred two. Those are the long term proposals. But we're also facing the question of what's the PFD in this year's budget. I mean, set aside set aside that battle. What's the PFD that's going to come out this year? Because both of those. Both SJR uh, uh, 6 and SJR 18, Natasha's SJR 18, are constitutional amendments that wouldn't be voted on until 2022. So, the, right. so you know, the other issue that's going on underneath this and, and maybe part of all of the all of the stuff that she went through yesterday to roll out SJR 18 is sort of is to sort of hide what's going on in this year's budget. But we're also we're also in the midst of this year's budget and the. Uh, and, and the budget that, that Senate Finance came out with yesterday, the capital budget they, they came out with yesterday, plus the uh, uh, the uh, operating budget they came out with earlier, spends it all. I mean, <laughs> it, it it doesn't even leave a five hundred dollar PFD. I, they can they can scrimp and sweat and, and and move dollars around, and they can come up with enough to cover the five hundred dollar PFD. But basically, we out of out of Senate Finance, we're seeing. The budget that we're heading toward from here on out, uh, if we don't get this thing under control, uh, and it is it is basically uh, we take it all uh, and we spend it all and we don't leave you anything, <laughs> type uh, type of approach. So it's I mean we we we're, we're not in good shape either in the long term uh, with uh, with the proposals the SJR proposals, or in the short term with uh, with wh- where this year's budget is going. 
it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, we, we've got a lot of stuff to play out today and tomorrow. Uh, uh, if they're going to try to cram the budget through, as Machecki said, if they're going to try to cram it through by the end of the regular session, which is tomorrow, uh, there's there's a lot of stuff that's going to play out. I mean, the Senate's going to come out with the budget. The Senate is going to go to the Senate floor. Uh, hopefully, there will be amendment proposals on the Senate floor to to reduce the to reduce the spending. Uh, it has to go. It, ha- it it will go back over to the House, whether the House concurs or not. Uh, uh, if it doesn't concur, it goes to conference. But underlying all of that, we have the reverse sweep. Right. Um, that I mean, the whole thing's set up based upon the reverse sweep working. Right. Um, and I think there's a solid. Uh, a minority in the House, uh, you only need uh, uh, a third. There's a solid minority in the House to to block the reverse sweep. So, well, and this goes back to what you were talking about with Senator Machicki trying to pu- force some of these things down now and, f- and push it through because the 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 speed issue is where the reverse sweep comes in because that is leverage right now. If so, if they want to get SJR six or SJR one or whatever put through. They have to do it and have the leverage to be able to do it. And by taking the reverse sweep and hold it, using that as leverage, they may have some power. If if the budget goes through and everything else and the reverse sweep happens or it doesn't happen or whatever, that leverage is done and used. They no longer have that lever to hold against any kind of vote on any SJR uh, moving forward if it happens in August or whatever. That's right. I mean, yeah, the, the, the reverse sweep is the power that – the, that legislators have right now, and then you've got the governor, um, and and if, and we and we really haven't heard from the governor about about the current budget proposal. So the question is going to be, if uh, if Senate Finance rolls out this budget, if the House concurs or in a conference committee comes close, you've got two thing, two big steps remaining. One is the reverse sweep, the effort to do the reverse sweep, and that's really the reverse sweep is is critically important for PCE. Uh, uh, preserving PCE. So if there isn't a reverse sweep, PCE gets swept into the into the CBR and potentially, I mean, this is Lyman's concern, potentially disappears. Uh, and then you've got the governor. So if the if the legislature comes out with a budget, what's the governor going to do? Is he going to approve a budget that essentially wipes out the PFD? Um, uh, or it, because there's nobody now talking about an, ER, an excess RA draw, is, is he going to approve a budget that essentially wipes out the PFD, or uh, he veto the budget, either in part to create space for a PFD, or uh, just send it back to the legislature and say, you guys didn't deal with the PFD issue. So here it comes back. I want you to deal with the PFD issue. I told you I want it dealt with dealt with in the first special session. I'm not going to approve your budget until you deal with it uh, and, uh, and, and vetoes it. And he's got 16 in the legislature, which is what you need. He's got 16 in the legislature that will uphold that. So we're a long way, even though there's two days left, we're a long way from from this uh, this fully playing out. Um, and there's and there's leverage, as I say, in the minor in the hands of the minority, uh, particularly in the House on the CB on the reverse sweep. And there's leverage in the governor's hands if he will use it uh, to to press these issues forward. By sending the whole budget back and saying, I'm not going to deal with this budget until you do, as I ask you to do in the call, uh, deal with the PFD. Well, and but we, we've we already spoken in the past about how this governor, that may not be his style. He's not confrontational. He does not like to get at cross purposes with people. Uh, I mean, he's a big, tall, intimidating guy, but he's very mild mannered and it just doesn't seem like he wants to get into a kerfluffle over over this. And I'm concerned, Brad, less than a minute here, but I'm concerned that that if he doesn't I just concerned that he's not going to fight for this and he may not veto. He may not return it. He may just mildly go, OK, that's what you want and sign off on it. Well, that's a possibility, but I mean, that's how we've gotten to where we've gotten. I mean, that's how we that's how we've gotten to a budget that now consumes all of the revenues, including the PFD, because we haven't had the fight about about this issue. The governor said last week in SJR six, he wants to have that fight. He's ready to have that fight. He wants a special session to have that fight. That's this is the opportunity sending the budget back and saying you haven't done your job. You haven't completed what I ask you to do. Sending that budget back is is the 
power he's got right now to, to, to force that fight to come forward in the first special session. Well, and if he sends the budget back, it does, it does um, again, protect – that leverage of the reverse sweep and the, I mean, because that's all part and parcel of the budget process. So if he sends it all back, all of that stuff may still be viable. Uh, and, uh, and it kind of encapsulates that. So they still have it as a arrow in their quiver, right? Moving back into yep. the next part. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, uh, they have it, they have it as an arrow in their quiver before it goes to the governor. Right. And then they would have it. Uh, if he sends it back, they would have it in their, it would be, put back in their quiver again exactly exactly so they'd have the option and you know quite honestly maybe that's the way to do it because then they show that they're not afraid to use it and if it comes back to them then somebody says well they've already they've already denied us once and uh they still have that leverage maybe now we have to listen to them and maybe that's the solution for that i know that sometimes you get agitated by this stuff but you're always so calm and cool but at this point when i started seeing some of the stuff that was being discussed when i started seeing some of the movements by the Senate president and now the the proposal by Natasha, I just, I mean, I just scream at the sky and go, why? Business as usual. This is the same thing over and over again. This is where we're at. And I'm just like, why can't we just, you know, face the music that there's not enough money and that somebody's going to have to take care of this and we've got to protect the permanent fund at all costs. I mean, it's it's just it's infuriating. It is as a student of this and having watched this for twenty plus years. At some point, you know, my head's from slamming my head on the desk. It just gets sore. You know what I mean? I just get a little sore. Yeah, I guess I've been infuriated for the last ten years. I mean, it's we you you. You can see this coming. You can see this coming from 2014. You can see it coming from from 2013. And and we've been through these cycles before. Natasha's SJR 18 and Kelly's uh, HB 202 is nothing more than a recycled proposal that Liesl McGuire had in uh, in 2013 and 20 well 2014 and 20 and 2015. It, uh, Natasha's predecessor in the Senate, same seat, same constituency. Uh, it's it's what Liesl rolled out uh, back then as as the new best and brightest thing. We'll we'll disconnect the PFD from from the permanent fund earnings and we'll we'll put it over here with the resources. Same, not same exact bill. They at least changed some commas, uh, but but pretty much the same thing. So yeah, you don't. Yes, I I've been. I've gone through these. I've gone through this whole stage of, <laughs> of, uh, of, of, of being upset over over the period of time. It's just we're recycling back through it. So right, this is I not the phases I, of grief. This is the phases of rage, and we're in the downslide of the phases of rage at this point because <laughs> I mean, you can only sustain that level of anger for so many years, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it's uh, you, you just see it. I mean, you just see the same thing. The the, the fact when Merrick came out with two hundred two. Uh, it, it just, it just, you know, it was just bright as day. We're just going back to what Liesl did. <laughs> and when, when Natasha came out with SJR 18, hey, well, that's just the same thing Kelly's doing. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, I think I had the rage back when Liesl did it the first time. And now it's just, it's more analytical. Oh, I can see what you're doing here. I can see the, the moving part. You're, I can see the, your, your little effort at salesmanship here. You're throwing in the PCE and in, in SJR 18 to try to get uh, Lyman back, back on, uh, back on your side. I can see that you're, you know, they put the 6 billion that, that, uh, that people claimed uh, is still in the ERA. We'll take that out, and maybe maybe people get all excited about that. You can see the little, you know, the little nuances that they're doing. But fundamentally, it's the same thing that Liesl tried uh, uh, back in uh, back in 24, 20, 2014 and twenty fifteen. Yeah, it's um, it's very frustrating. Any any thoughts on Michiki's move to try and just hustle the the uh, the the budget through and then try and push all the rest of this stuff off till August? I mean, I get the feeling like somebody might call the special session in and then and then gavel it out because you know they want to get out of there. They got other things they want to do and everything else. But they it just seems like it's it's a rush, 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 and and there's no support. From his point of view, anyway, and I have I've reached out to him and has not responded to me to get his position on SJR six, but I'm getting the feeling he does not support it. About a minute and a half here. Well, I I I don't think there's 14 and 27. So part of it may be that Machecki, as president of the Senate, says, uh, "Why do I want to sit here? Why do I want all my members to sit here for a month if I don't have 14 and 27? Let's give it time to see if we can build up to 14, uh, 14 and 27." 
and and a judgment may be a judgment on his part that trying to cram it through is going to make 14 and 27 less likely. I mean, that's I, who sure, knows what's sure. going on in Peter's mind. Sure. But 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 the goal is 14 and 27 and, and whatever you need to do to get to get to 14 and 27 is what you need to do. I just wonder, <clears throat> I just wonder uh, with the cross, uh, with the cross body support and the and the cross party support, and it's not it's not a, a perfect balance by any means, but I would think that more people would be involved. I mean, SGR one would have been my choice because it's the statutory amount, but that one has been killed pretty much in committee. It's just basically sitting in there, and it's not going in a, anywhere. It doesn't have the support of uh, both sides like SGR six does. I would say at least it's the one option that uh, I think has got the biggest chance of passing. I, I I do as well, Michael. But if the governor wants it, he's going to have to force the issue. And and you know the biggest thing that he's got, and, and really maybe the only thing he's got to do that, is to send the budget back and say you haven't finished your work. I told you I want to resolve the PFD. I've set up a special session. That's what we're going to do. I'm the governor. I get to do this. Right. Uh, that that's what I was elected to do. And. If he does that, I think I think that increases the likelihood of of bringing things together. If he doesn't, if he signs whatever bill they send up there with a little veto here and a little veto there, uh, I think that sets a very bad sign. Let's continue on. Brad is a little perplexed about why the governor put off appropriating the federal ARP monies, that bailout money, until August. But uh, in your opinion, Brad, it's not a good thing. Tell us, uh, tell us what you're talking about here. So the federal uh, American Relief Plan uh, monies can be used to back out, um, or, or to yeah, to to to, to back out uh, uh, the need for general fund monies to support regular spending. It can be used to to support general spending, leaving the general funds to be used for other purposes. There's about five. There's 500 million. In art money, we can use this year 500 million in art money that we can use next year. If it were me, what I would be looking to do, and I was trying to create space for the PFD, what I would be doing is taking that 500 million that I can use this year, using it as a revenue source for the budget, back out the need to cut the PFD to support the budget, creating more money for the uh, uh, creating more money for uh, the PFD. I would do. I would. I would leave that door open to do that. Uh, we've talked a lot about the, uh, the art money uh, on the show before, uh, and I've made this point before. And I and I just don't understand why the governor's not doing that. What he's what he did in the call in the special sessions call is to put off dealing with the art money uh, until August. So that means it's not available to back in to the current budget and create. Uh, uh, leftover general funds to use for the for the PFD he's put it off to, to later which means the current budget needs to you know stand on its own needs to to balance on its own and so you get into the situation where they're using all of the general fund money that otherwise is meant for the PFD uh, to to support the budget um, the, the 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 concern I have is that is that what everyone down there has in Juno has in mind is using the ARP money for new things to, you know, spend a little here to help support local government because some of the local governments aren't, didn't get all of the money they need uh, out of the, the local government piece of the ARP money uh, to spend it on quote infrastructure plans to spend it on uh, other uh, uh, quote COVID related uh, issues but to spend it on new things and not use it as it can be used for, as the government's, as the federal government's made clear, not use it to back out, uh, to back out uh, 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 general fund money and create general fund, the, the availability of general fund money for the PFD. If the governor, if the governor was really, to me, if the governor was really focused on getting the maximum amount of PFD you can, without uh, uh, overdrawing the ERA or without doing anything else to get the maximum amount of PFD you can, he would use, I would think he would use the ARP money, as I say, to back it, to, 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 to backstop the budget 
and create general fund money left over for the PFD. But he's not doing that. He's pushed it off to August. And I think I think that I think he's missing an opportunity, um, missing an opportunity to uh, uh, to really help uh, on the PFD issue to help to help fund the PFD issue. Now it's not a permanent solution. The ARF money only lasts this year and next year. But as we've talked on the show before, it could be used as a bridge uh, while we're figuring out the other solutions uh, to get to it. The the the, the problem with the problem with the ARP money is it can be used it, it can be used either for to bat to for to cover current budget items, or it could be used for a lot of extra you know additional things. And I'm concerned that what's happened is the governor has been convinced that we're going to use it all for extra things. It really doesn't matter to the current budget because we're going to spend it all on extra things, and it's being used at like a windfall. Uh, to uh, to to you know gin up a bunch of other programs. We saw a little bit of that yesterday uh, on the Senate floor. The Senate floor took up the Senate took up uh, Senator Begich's proposal uh, to uh, create uh, special scholarships for frontline workers uh, who uh, during the COVID era during the COVID period who want to go to college. It's a co- it's a it's a scholarship for right. a special scholarship for those frontline workers. It's not just a scholarship, it pays for it basically gives them free schooling. Right. And and what they did yesterday was or what they had done in advance of yesterday was they switched funding sources. Originally that was supposed to come out of general funds, but yesterday they switched funding sources and it's now coming out of the ARP funds. So I'm concerned that I, I'm concerned that what we're seeing is the ARP money being used as a piggy bank or as a windfall for all of these additional frills we want to do, as opposed to being used as as the federal government has told us we can use it to backfill uh, the current budget and create uh, uh, create revenues to, that would help support uh, support the PFD. And I just I don't understand why the governor is doing it that way. Right, because it can be used again, as you said to create space to offset general fund spending and therefore they could use general fund spending to pay the PFD. And so that's, I mean, that's the conundrum here. Why aren't you doing that? The one thing that giving that money directly to Alaskans would have the biggest economic impact and, and, and help more Alaska families than any other program you could dream up instead of picking winners and losers, only frontline workers get free education for this instead of picking winners and losers it benefits everyone in the state equally yeah exactly so i it, i mean I, i'm a little concerned that the process has been captured by the special interests who 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 want you know as usual who want this project funded or that project funded <laughs> surprise <laughs> or want you know want my you know my local government to have a little bit more because i didn't get as much as i wanted out of the out of the federal art monies uh, that's directed to local governments, or I want to, you know, build something over here. Um, I, I, I'm I'm troubled that that's what's happening. I mean, this this insight we had yesterday about the switch in funding for the for the frontline workers bill. I'm I'm troubled that that's what we're beginning to see with respect to the art monies, and that's five hundred million dollars. Right. I mean, everybody will tell you, oh, we're going to use that to generate the economy. We're going to use it for all these specific programs to make sure that you know we put people back to well yeah but you're doing that at the expense of of being able to fulfill your obligations under the under the pfe pfd or at least increase your ability to to uh, to fulfill your obligations under the pfd so i i think it's a wrong use of the money it's something we've talked about on the show before but it's something that the governor's essentially taken off the table by pushing by pushing the art money to the to the to the August uh, uh, session, as opposed to dealing with it as part of the budget and part of the PFD issue uh, in the first special session. Yep, absolutely. I'm with you, Brad. I do not understand why the governor, uh, again, the first the first draft of what he put out for the art money included a bunch of spending on what appeared to be, in some cases, new programs and everything else. This money should be used to offset some of the spending that we. I mean, we're already. You've got a 40% deficit. I don't think now is the time to create and start spending on new programs. I think now is the time to start softening the blow and using it as a step down uh, into a more sustainable budget. But apparently we're in the very vast minority on this. 
Yeah, the, 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 the sequence on this is really odd. I mean, the governor came out with his initial proposal that spent a lot of it on on new things, a little bit, a little bit of it, like 135 million, maybe, if I recall correctly, uh, as backfill for the current budget, which would have created fiscal space to help add to the PFD. And then the House um, uh, uh, added a, the House, the House Finance Committee added a little bit more as backfill. They still spent the bulk, bulk of it on new things, but they added a little bit more as backfill. Then it goes to the Senate side, and they wipe it all out. I mean, the Senate the Senate doesn't use any of it as backfill, as best I can tell, uh, in in the budget they proposed. And they're they're the Senate is doing it all from general funds, saving the ARP all for special things. And then the governor comes out with the with the special session call that pushes the ARP funds off to August and essentially takes them out of this budget cycle entirely. So the sequence. The sequence would would fit a theory that, yes, we were going to use a little bit to help create fiscal space for the PFD, and then the House was going to use a little bit to help create fiscal space for the PFD, and then the special interests moved in, all the people who wanted their own project financed, and by the time it gets to Senate finance, that's all gone, and now the governor's joined in on that, and and it's and and has moved it off to August or where it's going to be, you know, spent in for for special things. I, just a very bad sequence. This is our this was our one chance, one chance to be able to use federal money to backfill the the ongoing budget and to create fiscal space for a PFD, and to and to just you know throw that away. That's five hundred million dollars. That's five hundred million dollars. That's half. Uh, well, that's a quarter of of what the PFD is supposed to be, but it's more than what Kelly Merrick and, and Natasha von Imhoff's bill would put to the PFD. It's five hundred million dollars, and and we're just and and it looks like we're now reserving that for additional things, as opposed to using it to, to back in. It's. Uh... <clears throat> I mean, I don't even know what to say at this point. Uh, we we watch what's going on, and it's like there's two different people. There's like there's two different governors, uh, one who says the one thing, and then when the push comes to shove, something else happens, and the and the call gets changed. Uh, you know, on the other side, we had an opportunity. We could have used it. I mean, his his initial proposal to me was baffling that he would spend only a hundred million dollars or hundred and fifty million dollars to backfill and the rest of it went to what appeared to be, although I had arguments with one of his staffers that it wasn't oh no no, these were these were existing programs. But I mean existing programs that weren't funded up to the levels that they were talking about funding. So it was new spending. That was a little that was a little uh disheartening to me. And then to see him come out with SGR six, maybe we found some light. And then again the third move of well, we'll push it off till August. I mean, there's a there's some real schizophrenia going on here in the in the governor's policy in the public view anyway. There is, and 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 this governor isn't very good about explaining himself. <laughs> I mean, one of the great things about last last Wednesday's press conference is it's one of the few times that the governor actually explained why he was doing what he was doing and stayed till the end of the press conference uh, to answer to answer some questions, um, and and you know to sort of follow through on it. Uh, but now we've sort of on on this proposal to move the ARP funds to August. I mean, I I can't find any rationale. Uh, for for why they've done that in in the public statements at least, uh, and so we're sort of back into the uh, back into the dark mode of uh, of doing it uh, doing it behind the curtain. Yeah, I mean I'm concerned. I I don't know why. I mean and and this is I think you're 100 percent accurate. I've been saying that for a long time. This governor needs to go out there and electrify his base. I mean his base put him in office. The ones that that wanted the full PFD, they wanted a balanced budget, they wanted a smaller, more limited government, and he should have been every step of the way. He should have been he should have been engaging. the The one good thing he did during the uh, you know at one point was that he kind of kicked all the press to the curb and was going to go straight to the people with Facebook. Well, that didn't last long, but that was an excellent way for him to be able to get his vision out there uh, and go directly to the people. And that's what he should be doing. He should be engaging the peoples directly and 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 whipping up their support to go after their legislators cuz he can only exert so much power from the from the you know from the third floor whereas the people can exert a lot more yeah and he showed last wednesday i mean i think that was an excellent press conference a little bumbling a little stumbling but an excellent press conference and i think he showed last wednesday he can do it and so and so now the question is why doesn't he do it more often right. why doesn't he do it about more things 
Yeah, he should have been doing that from the very beginning, quite honestly. I mean, I, not that I would ever want to be governor, but if I was governor, I can guarantee you that I would be holding a weekly I would be holding a weekly fireside chat with Alaskans explaining why I'm doing the things that I'm doing and what they can do to help. And here's my vision and here's how we can execute it and here's what you need to do and I can't do it alone. I need your support. I'm one governor. I've got to convict 60 other yahoos to do what I want. That I mean that you have to do that. Yeah. Well, He's got another opportunity coming up with the budget. I mean, if the if the legislature sends him what looks like is the Senate finance budget, anything along the lines of the Senate finance budget that spends it all, doesn't leave any for the PFD or creates some sort of back end road to create a PFD, he's got the opportunity again to say, nope, we did. You didn't complete your job. I've set up a special session. Special session. Take it back. Work on it more. I want the PFD dealt with. Yeah. And. And hopefully he will. I mean, that's an opportunity for him to do exactly what you're saying, to fire up his base. I hope he does. I hope he I hope somebody's listening on this. All right, Brad, I wanted to get to number three. I got less than two minutes. Can you give me a quick synopsis of number three, which is, of course, the sneak peek and warm up of we are um, uh, unrepresented? We, we've got a we've got a movie coming uh, virtual showing. That means everybody can watch it online uh, in their own homes. It'll be available next uh, uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday of the film. We are unrepresented. Justin Amash uh, is in the film, plays a major role in the film, talking about the corrupting influences of money in politics uh, and how money, the, the way that money has been used by the special interest and by the parties is, is, is disconnecting legislators from their constituents and connecting them instead to, uh, to moneyed interests. Very important film, very important issue. Uh, I know you're going to talk about it on the show more this week and, and next, uh, but it's going to be available virtually, uh, as I say, uh, on uh, Monday, Tuesday, or Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday next week. And then at 5 o'clock on Tuesday, we're going to have a panel uh, of both of national leaders, uh, David Walker uh, uh, and Daniel Falconer from the film, and, and local uh, people, Senator Wilikowski who's been a leader on the corrupting influences of money in politics, and Julie, Os- Julie Olson from uh, uh, Move to Amend Alaska are going to be on, be on a panel uh, moderated by Jason Grant. I'm going to be looking forward to it. Uh, we'll be talking about that more as we go forward. Brad Keith Lee, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you, my friend, for coming on board. We appreciate it. Michael, as always, thanks for having me. Well, that's a wrap for another week's edition of the weekly top three from Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify pages. And keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on the Weekly Top 3.